Central Life Church and our network churches, I'm so glad to have you with us this week. You're going to be incredibly blessed. I want to introduce to you a guest speaker who's talking about our series, Multiply. This person has impacted my life more than any other person in the world when it comes to the subject of generosity. He's a pastor of a phenomenal church with four campuses based out of the Dallas, Texas area. It's called Gateway Church. It's a church just over 10 years old, ministering to 14,000 or 15,000 people, which is totally unheard of. This guy has a life message more than any other teacher I know, his message on generosity will impact you. He wrote the book, the best-selling book, The Blessed Life, and I'm telling you, it blessed my life so much, I've given away more copies than I could ever count. It's my honor to welcome today a great man of God. Would you show honor to Pastor Robert Morris? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really, really glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I just want to also greet all of the campuses and all of the network churches and uh, just tell you how much we love Life Church and we love Craig and Amy. And I respect Craig Rochelle probably as much as any pastor that I know in America or even, for that matter, all around the world. And I travel to a lot of churches, and uh, you probably know this, but let me just say, as someone who has been in a lot of churches, you need to thank God for Craig Rochelle because you have a great, great pastor, a wonderful pastor. And uh, so I'm excited to be here in this series called Multiply. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 13 or turn on your iPhones to Exodus 13. I didn't mean turn them on like no texting during the message, all right? But just, you know, however you get to your Bible, get to Exodus chapter 13. And I want to share a message with you called God Must Be First. God Must Be First. Look at Exodus chapter 13, verse 1. Now, this is kind of Old Testament-y. Let me just say that, okay? But don't, don't tune me out, all right? We'll, we'll bring it up to New Testament, all right? Exodus 13, verse 1. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and beast, it is mine. And then look, at verse, look down at verse 12 and 13, verses 12 and 13. Then you shall set apart to the Lord all that open the womb. That is, every firstborn that comes from an animal which you have, the males shall be the Lord's. Notice, shall be or belong to the Lord. But every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. And if you will not redeem it, then you shall break its neck. In other words, if you don't do this, you're going to lose it anyway. And we're going to talk in just a moment about finances. Notice this principle. If you will not give this to the Lord, you're going to lose it anyway. All right? And all the firstborn of man among your sons you shall redeem. Now, let me say again, I know that's kind of Old Testament-y. I understand that. But we're going to talk about the principle of the first and about giving the first to God and understanding about the first, all right? So here's point number one. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. If you're not taking notes, I want you to write this down, all right? (laughs) Here's, Here's number one. The firstborn must be sacrificed or redeemed. The firstborn must be sacrificed or redeemed. Now, let me give you uh, the difference between these two and talk about it for a moment. Again, I know this is going back in Old Testament, but I, I want you to remember that 1 Corinthians 10 says that everything, everything in the Old Testament is an example to us. It was written for our instruction. So what is the instruction or the example that we see in this, all right? The firstborn must be sacrificed or redeemed. Here's how you knew which to do, which to do, all right? If, if you had an animal and your animal was considered a, a clean animal, then you sacrificed the firstborn. If your animal was considered an unclean animal, then you had to sacrifice a clean animal to redeem the unclean animal. Now, I don't know if you ever thought about this, but, you know, 
was this just kind of a, a weird part of God that, you know, <laughs> he wanted animals to be killed, and, and he, just, he just has this kind of dark side that we see every now and then, you know, in the law. No, th- this is a principle. Again, everything in the Bible points to Jesus. It's all an example for us. So I want to relate this to Jesus. I want you to think about this. If it's unclean, it has to be redeemed with the sacrifice of the clean. Now, let me say that again. If it's unclean, it has to be redeemed with the sacrifice of the clean. And if it's clean, it has to be sacrificed. So, let me just ask you a question, and you can answer me. All the campuses, network churches, you can answer out loud. It's okay to talk in church when I ask a question. Okay, so, um, were you born clean or unclean? Unclean, right? Because David says we were all born in sin. Uh, let me let me prove it to you, by the way, okay? Um, did you have to teach your children to be bad? <laughs> or did it come naturally for them? <laughs> right? Okay, so we have to teach them to be good. It's because we're all born with a sin nature. So we were all born unclean. We were born sinners, okay? Was Jesus born clean or unclean? Clean. Okay, remember the principle. Listen, because you're about to go, oh, it's just going to shock you. Listen, the clean had to be sacrificed so the unclean could be redeemed. That's what we just read in Exodus 13. That's what that was all about. Here's what he said. If you have an unclean animal, the, the, that, the, the, the offspring then has to be uh, redeemed by the sacrifice of a clean. So we're going to talk today about giving the first to God, and we're going to relate it to finances in this series, Multiply. We're going to talk about some of this and about finances, and it's okay to talk about finances because Jesus talked about finances. And if we don't learn finances from the Bible, where are we going to learn how to handle our finances, you see? So think about this. Jesus was sacrificed so we could be redeemed. So let me say it another way, because this is referring to giving the first to God. Jesus is God's tithe. God gave Jesus in hope or in faith that we would give our lives to him, that we would give our lives to God. In other words, God didn't wait to see if we would straighten up and then give Jesus. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God gives Jesus before anyone really believes in Jesus. He gives Jesus as that sacrifice. So first, so the firstborn must be sacrificed or redeemed. So you think about this. If, if you have a, a sheep and your sheep has a lamb, you have to give the first one to God, and you have to give the first one to God so that the rest are redeemed. This is a principle all through Scripture. Even if you want to look at it this way, many people, many, many people don't understand why we meet on Sunday. Because really the Sabbath is Saturday. It's the seventh day of the week. But they begin meeting on Sabbath for two reasons. One, it's because the day Jesus rose. Secondly, they gave the first day to God. So even by coming to church, and by the way, if you come to a Saturday evening service, uh, that in, the, in the Jewish calendar, that, that, that actually starts on Saturday night. It's, so, okay, so you're okay. All right, you're okay. All you Saturday people, you're okay. All right. But what you do is you begin your week with God. When you begin your week with God, the rest is blessed. When you begin your day with God, the rest is blessed. And when you give the first portion of your finances to God, the rest is blessed. That's this principle, all right? So the firstborn must be sacrificed or redeemed. Here's point number two. The first fruits must be offered. The first fruits must must be, and notice I'm putting the word must in here because it's important for us to walk under the blessing of God, must be offered. Now, just stay there in Exodus 13 because we're going to come back to it, but let me read you a couple of other scriptures. Exodus 23 verse 19 says, the first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. The first, notice this, the first of your first fruits you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. And then Proverbs 3, verses 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Now, let's take this back to 
uh, the firstborn just for a moment, and, and we'll relate it to first fruits. God said when your animal has a, a, um, a baby animal, whatever it is, you're to sacrifice the first one. Now, think about this. That takes faith. He didn't say, wait until the animal has 10 offspring and then give me the 10th one. He said, give me the first one and the rest will be blessed. This is something about tithing that many people never understood. Yes, it is 10%. God put the 10th. But the reason, by the way, he put the 10th is so that every person can give. Whether you make a little or you make a lot, it's a percentage. So it, it levels the playing ground. You see what I'm saying? So yes, it is 10%, but it's the first 10%. It's very important for us to understand that. It takes faith to give the first 10% and then pay the bills, not pay the bills and see if you have enough left over for God. You need to understand something about God. God will always be first. God is first whether you put him first or not. When you think about the attributes of God, God, this is the preeminence of God. It means he's above all, before all, higher than all, first of all. God is always first. And this principle is all through Scripture. When they went in to conquer the, the promised land, when they went in to conquer that land, here's what God said, give me all of the silver and gold from Jericho. Now, have you ever thought about why did God say give me all of the silver and gold from Jericho? It's very simple when you understand the principle of the first. It's because Jericho was the first city. Here's what God was saying. Give me the first and the rest are blessed. He didn't say conquer ten cities and then give me one. He said give me the first one and the rest are blessed. And as soon as they disobeyed, by the way, the second city then, Ai, was not blessed. And they had to get that right before they could conquer the rest of the promised land. So this is all through Scripture. Um, When I was in Bible college, one of the students asked the professor a question He said, why did God accept Abel's offering, but he didn't accept Cain's offering? And I I, I remember, and I look back now, and I think I'm so proud of the professor for his answer. Here's what the professor in a a Bible school said. I don't know. (laughs) Well, if any of you went to school, you know that was real unusual for any professor to admit he didn't know anything. So I thought it was great. But you cannot understand that unless you understand the principle of firstborn and firstfruits. That's the only way you can understand why God accepted Abel's, but he didn't accept Cain's. Remember, the firstborn you give to God and the first fruit you give to God. Okay, let me read that to you, and you'll see why God accepted Abel's, but he didn't accept Cain's. Genesis 4, verse 3. And in the process of time, now that's very important, these words. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Notice it never says he brought the first offering or first fruits. He brought an offering in the process of time of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. There it is. That's why. Abel is a rancher. He gives the firstborn. Cain is a farmer. He doesn't give first fruits. He just gives an offering when he wants to on his terms. And God says, I I can't accept that. I won't accept that. Now, we have to hit just a little bit of the attributes of God again to understand this. There are things that God can't do. You know that? He can't do. Let let me explain because we say, oh, God can do anything. No, no. God can't change. He can't. You know why he can't change? Because he's perfect. And if he could change, he could get better. But he can't get better because he's best. Everyone got that? So God can't change. Um, I'll tell you one that many people never thought of. God can't think like we think. God can't think like we think. Now, I know the Bible talks about his thoughts, but I'm actually going to explain that to you in just a moment. But God can't think the way we think. You want to know why? Because we think to figure things out. God doesn't think to figure things out. Because of his omniscience, it's another one of his attributes. God knows everything. Matter of fact, he knows everything at the same time. Let me say it another way. Nothing has ever occurred to God. God has never said, you know, it just occurred to me. Never. Because he knows everything at the same time. Okay, so God can't think. Wait, and and we, we know the Scripture, but we just don't relate it to his attributes. Here's what he says. My thoughts are not your thoughts. I don't think like you think. Okay, so God can't accept an offering that's not first. 
because of his preeminence. He cannot do it. He will not do it. This is why he didn't accept uh, Cain's and he accepted Abel's. So please understand. Now, understand, again, we can give at any time God speaks, but if we don't give the first to God, we're not following a principle that's all through Scripture that's more than just the tithe, firstborn, first fruits. So, all right? So here's number three. The tithe must be first. The tithe must be first. Leviticus 27.30 says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. It is set apart to the Lord. And when we understand firstborn and first fruits, it is the first because he uses the exact same language with the firstborn. He says, it belongs to God. It is the Lord's. Now, the firstborn is the Lord's. Now, he says, the tithe is the Lord's. Exact same language. Actually, same book. Same language. Now, here's something that bothers me is that people say, well, tithing was under the law, and I'm not under the law as a Christian. I'm, I'm under grace, and so I don't tithe. Well, there's a couple of things that bother me about that. First of all, tithing was before the law, way before the law. Jacob tithed uh, about uh, um, uh, 400 years before the law. Uh, Abraham tithed over, four, over 400, between four and 500 years before the law. Before the law, they gave 10%. But if you go all the way back and take this principle, all, we just went back to Cain and Abel. And, and it was the principle of giving the first to God. And if you want to even go back farther than that, when you think about tithe, here's what God says. The tithe is mine. Don't touch it. That's mine. It belongs to me. Okay, remember, go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, God said, you can eat from any tree except that one. That one's mine. You understand what he was doing already? He was putting stewardship into his people. He was telling them, listen, the way you steward something is you understand that part, some of it's mine. Uh, the tithe was not only before the law, it was after the law. Jesus himself, Jesus himself, Matthew 23, 23 said, you ought to tithe. He said to them, you tithe of all these little spices, but you neglect the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. But then Jesus makes this statement. Now listen to this. Jesus says, this you ought to do. Now remember what they were doing? They were tithing. This you ought to do without leaving the other undone. Okay, can I say something? That verse alone is enough for me to tithe. If the one who saved me, and by the way, I got saved in Jake's Motel, room 12. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, Jake's, by the way, if you will know, has um, no stars. <laughs> <laughs> but they did provide pets. <laughs> okay, all right, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right, so here's the point. If the one who saved me, and I, I, was, I needed to be saved. And so did you, by the way. If the one who saved me said you ought to, that's enough. That's enough. So Jesus said it. But, but what's amazing to me is we say, well, it, it was under the law, so now it's bad. That's just amazing to me. There were a lot of things under the law. Are, 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 are they bad now? If it was good under the law, like tithing, is it bad now? Honor your mother and father. Well, I, I'm under grace. I don't need to do that anymore. That's a principle in God's Word. Or if it was bad under the law, is it good now? Thou shalt not murder. Is it okay now because I'm under grace? Because you cut me off the other day in, in the, on the freeway, and so I'm a Christian. I'm not under the law. You see what I'm saying? It's just crazy. Here, as a matter of fact, Jesus said this. Do, do you know that the righteousness of grace exceeds the righteousness of the law? The righteousness of grace exceeds the righteousness of the law. Here's what Jesus said. You have heard it said, you shall not murder. Where had they heard that said? The law. But I say to you, now Jesus is full of grace. That's what John 1 says, full of grace. Jesus said, but I say to you, don't even be angry at your brother. That's farther than the law. The law said I couldn't kill you. Grace says I can't even be mad at you. Jesus said, you have heard it said, you shall not commit adultery. Where had they heard that said? The law. But I say to you, don't even look. Don't even look at a woman to lust. And if you have, you've already committed adultery in your heart. That's farther than the law. So when someone says to me, I don't give 10%, Pastor, because I'm not under the law, I'm under grace. I say, praise the Lord, you give more than 10%. Because <laughs> grace always goes farther than the law. Okay, 
So the tide needs to be first. So let me give you an example. If, um, if you came and did some work at my house, and let's say that your business is a landscaper, and we looked at all your expenses, your employees, and, and, and the plants and shrubs and all the stuff that you bought, and, and your profit was going to be $1,000. That, that was your profit, all right? Clear profit. So I paid all the expenses, and then I give you 10 $100 bills. So you have 10 this is after expenses. This is your income. You have 10 $100 bills in your hand. Let me ask you two questions, all right? First of all, it's $1,000. So how much is the tithe? I know this is math, <laughs> but okay. How much is the tithe? $100, right? Okay. So you've got 10 of them, and you've got 10 $100 bills. So one of those is the tithe, right? Everyone agree with that? Okay. Uh, which one is the tithe? Yeah, you're saying that because you're listening to this message and also, but, but how do you know which one's the first one? Well, let me tell you, it's the first one that leaves your hand. It's the first one you spend. In other words, if you go home and you say, let me put, you know, pay the mortgage, let me pay the car, let me pay, you know, the groceries, oh, I don't have enough left over for God. Or even if you do, and then God hears your part and you give it to him last. That's not tithing. Even though it's 10%, it's not tithing. Because what releases the blessing, listen very carefully, what releases the blessing on our finances is not the amount, but the order. It's the first 10%. So here's what you say, God, here's the first 10% to you. You want to know why? Because every time you get paid, you take a test. Did you know that? The test is, whom are you going to honor for your income? And you honor the first person you give to. And here's what Exodus says. When you give the first one to God, the rest are blessed. Listen to me very carefully. Don't give the first portion to the mortgage company because the mortgage company does not have the power to bless your finances. Only God does. Don't give the first portion to the electric company. The electric company cannot bless your finances. Only God can. Would you rather live? Would you rather live with 100% of your income and all of it cursed, or 90% of your income, and all of it blessed. That's what the Bible says, that when we keep it, that's what happened, by the way, uh, when Achan kept some of the silver and gold from, Je- gold from Jericho, Joshua 6 and 7, Joshua 6 says it's consecrated to the temple, Joshua 7, because he kept it in his tent, or his bank account, says it was cursed. It's consecrated if I give the first 10% or blessed, and it's cursed if I keep it. Uh, okay, so, the, so if I give, I'm blessed. If I don't give, I'm cursed. I feel like saying, I'm not a smart man, but I think I like to be blessed. <laughs> <laughs> this is not that hard. And here's what I would like to say to you. Tithe for one year and see what happens. I dare you. And you know why I can say that? Because it is the only, only, only issue in the Bible that God says you can test him on. He says, test me. Bring the tithe into the storehouse. By the way, that's not to a university. That's not to a hospital. That's not to a Christian school. That's not to a television ministry. That's to the local church that you attend. God never uses the word give when he talks about tithing. You want to know why? Because you can't give what doesn't belong to you. He uses the word bring. Bring the tithe into the storehouse. I'd, li- I'd like to just, to, the, to all of Life Church, I'd like to issue a challenge. Tithe for one year, and I will give you a money-back guarantee. How's that? If you're not fully satisfied, Pastor Craig will give you your money back <laughs> after one year. Now, listen to me. Here's the great thing. Here's the great thing. I can do that, and he would. I did this at our church. I actually told him that, and I bet you he'd say the same thing. You want to know why? Because the Word of God backs it up. Try tithing and see what happens in your family and in your marriage and in your health and in your finances. Try it. The tithe belongs to God, and we have to come to the place that we give the first to God, and we understand that. Let me um, go back to Exodus 13. Let me share with you one more thing, and then we're finished. Exodus 13, verse 14. It says, So it shall be when your son asks you in time to come, saying, What is this that you shall say to him, By strength of hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt? 
out of the house of bondage. And it came to pass when Pharaoh was stubborn about letting us go that the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore, very important this word, therefore, for this reason, I sacrifice to the Lord all males that open the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. Okay, here's what he's saying. Remember, this is the passage we started with about giving the firstborn to God. You remember that? Okay. Here's what God said. is saying, there's going to come a day when your son is going to ask you, what are you doing, Dad? Okay, I want you to think about a boy growing up and, Dad, Dad, the, 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 the sheep's about ready to deliver. And so the sheep delivers and take this newborn lamb, go over, cut his neck, kill him, throw him away, burn him up. So the boy, he doesn't say much because he's kind of young. He's thinking, I'm not going to cross dad. I know that. (laughs) (laughs) I think it really helped discipline personally. But anyway, um, as, as, as he gets a little older and he starts coming into the family business, I think at some point the son says, um, dad, I I need to talk to you. Um, we're in the ranching business and, um, you, you, You've developed a a bad habit. I don't know if you're aware of this, but every time one of our animals has a firstborn, um, you kill it. And um, it's hurting our profits, Dad. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about that. Here's what he said. He said, when he does that, you take your son and you say to him, son, I need to tell you something that I've never told you before. Our family wasn't always in the ranching business. As a matter of fact, we used to be slaves. We didn't own any sheep. But God, with a mighty hand, delivered us out of bondage. And that's why we gladly give to God, the firstborn of all of our animals. Now, hear this all the way back in Exodus. I've had something similar to this happen in my family with all of my children. All of my children. Matter of fact, my oldest son is with me today. And I want to tell you what happened with him. He was nine, ten years old. I was in my office writing the um, uh, tithe check. By the way, I, I give the tithe first. Now, now I do it online, you know, and, and I would, if you, if you do things online, pay your bills online, I would say the first thing you check, the first box should always be your tithe to the church. And I do that. Back then, though, I wrote a check. Now, for you younger people, we used to have pieces of paper. <laughs> they were called checks. Never mind. Um, but, but we, and, and, and listen to me, let me kind of say something. I am not legalistic about this. I'm not legalistic. It's a principle in my life, and it's a principle of life. But I'm not legalistic. It's like when I get paid, the first check I write is the tithe check. But if I get the checkbook and, and my wife has, you know, gone to the grocery store, I don't say, oh, that's great, sugar. We're cursed now. <laughs> you, gave, you gave the first check to Kroger's, and so we're cursed, you know. Okay. It's not legalistic. And by the way, God's not legalistic. Did you know that? He's not legalistic. He gave the law for two reasons, and the second reason most people know. Number one was to show the moral absolutes of God. If you want to know if God's for or against something, it's the law. The law will tell you, okay, the moral absolutes. Second reason he gave the law, most people don't know this, he gave the law to frustrate us to bring us to Christ. He really did. He gave the law, and if you don't believe he gave it to frustrate us, read Leviticus. <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole chapter on what you have to do if you get a scab, <laughs> I, I just see the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit up there saying, oh, and let's say they got to do this, and they got to wait seven days. Ten days. Let's say ten days. Let's say ten. <laughs> so basically, one day we'd come and say, I can't do this. And he says, that's what I've been waiting you to say. You don't have to do it. Jesus did it for you. Now come on in. Okay. All right. That was a good gospel message, wasn't it? <laughs> so I'm writing the tithe check, and my son comes in the office, and he sees the amount. He's now can add and understands, you know. And, and a tithe check to a little boy looks like a gazillion dollars, right? And he said to me, whoa, Dad, 
He said, you're giving more than a quarter. <laughs> you know, you give them quarters to give them, you know. And he said, why do you give the church so much money? And I took my son up on my lap, and I said to him, son, I'm going to tell you something that you don't know. But daddy wasn't always a Christian. And daddy used to be a very bad person. But God, with a mighty hand, delivered your daddy. Therefore, I gladly give to God the first portion of all of our income. It's a joy, son, to be able to do this. I'm telling you, when you catch this about honoring God with the first portion, it will change your life, and it will change your children's lives as well. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I want you to simply ask the Holy Spirit a question, not out loud, at all the campuses, at all the network churches, just, at, just in your heart, not out loud, just in your heart, just ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me through this message? Just ask Him. And for some of you, you have struggled and struggled and struggled to tithe, but you need to see it as a principle in God's Word of putting God first in your life. It's so much more important than just supporting an organization. It's declaring God's preeminence in your life. And then I want to pray for you. Lord, thank you. Thank you for every person hearing this message right now who really wants to give. God, we were born selfish. We were born again givers. And so, Lord, we want to give. We want to be generous. And we want to put you first in every area of our life, including our finances. Lord, thank you for that desire. And, Lord, I pray now that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I pray that you will impart faith to every hearer of the Word right now. That, Lord, we will always put you first in our finances. In Jesus' name. Let's continue in an attitude of prayers. As everybody's praying, nobody looking around, let me just ask point blank, and I want you to be really honest and respond quickly. How many of you would say truthfully that God is speaking to you and it's truly time to put Him first in your finances? All of our campuses, those of you who say, yes, God is speaking to me, would you lift your hands right now? Just lift your hands up and say, yes, I believe God is speaking to me and it's time to honor Him with the tithe. All of our locations, I just I want to pray for you. God, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for your provision. And God, I thank you in this area that's so difficult for so many of us that you told us that we could test you. And God, I pray that as so many people would put their faith, not in what they see, but God, they would put their faith in you, and they would honor you by giving you their first and their best. God, I know that you will bless the rest. God, I thank you in advance for the ways that you're gonna make yourself known as we trust you and bring the tithe. Honor you, God, with what you've trusted to us. Thank you for all the ways you're gonna show yourself faithful. As you keep praying today at all of our locations, even more than just putting God first in your finances, scripture is really, really clear. God doesn't want to be somewhere on your list. God wants to be first, the Lord of everything that you do. In fact, as you look at your life right now, many of you, if you were really honest, as we approach the holiday season, you're going to be distracted by all sorts of things, and you might be truthful and say, God is not first. Pastor Robert talked about that Jesus was God's tithe. Think about this. God so loved the world that he gave. He gave His only Son. Why? So that our sins could be forgiven and so that we could receive eternal life. In fact, there are many of you that God brought here for this specific reason because truthfully, you don't know God personally. Think about this. While we were still sinners, the Bible says, Jesus died for us. 
God wants to be first in every way. All of our locations, those of you who would say, truthfully, he's not. He, he, I'm, I, maybe I haven't believed in him, but that's not good enough. The Bible says even the demons believe and they tremble. Our sin, it separates us from a holy God. And it's time today to stop playing around, stop just going to church, but to truly put God first. All of our locations, those of you who would say, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. He died and He rose again for me so I could know Him and serve Him. I'm ready to put Him first and to give my life to Him. If that's your prayer today, would you lift up your hands right now? All of our locations, lift your hands up and say, yes, Jesus, I give you my life. Those of you at Church Online, if you could click right below me, and as people of all, at all of our locations, all of our network churches are lifting their hands, would you pray this very simple prayer with me? Just pray, Heavenly Father, I admit I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I believe Jesus died and rose again so I could know Him and serve Him. Forgive me of all my sins. Make me new. Today I put you first. Thank you for new life. Now you have mine. In Jesus' name I pray. I want to be the first to welcome you into the family of God. Congratulations on putting God first.